Hello. Hello. And welcome to the channel. <laughs> Today's the big day, guys. The beast is hopefully going to be back on the road. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's going to... I have I have confidence. I have confidence. You do that. Everything's in and the transmission's just ready to go back in the truck at this point. We got a, we got that fleece upgrade that we're going to do, which I'll, I'll let you guys know. It's a coolant bypass to properly circulate the coolant throughout the front and back end of the engine. What? Them hands are going again. And I got my antifreeze, then we just got some Rust-Oleum paint to do some <laughs> Yeah, to do some preventative maintenance underneath the truck. I'm holding his hand and he's like, he's like pulling up and he's trying so hard to be that Italian grandma, but I'm not letting him. It's time for Duncan. And I'll see you guys at Chester County Transmissions. Boom. Louder. We're at Chester County Transmissions, and while I'm waiting for Pete to get here, I'm just doing a little bit of preventative rust maintenance because I did have some surface rust around where the cross member bolts in. As you can see, it's uh, it's already painted. It's already painted. We sanded it down a little bit, and you know, just trying to protect her a little bit. I'm gonna have to do a lot more in the front, but I'm not doing that today. I'm gonna hit hit this cross member here a little bit too, sand that down a little bit and get her painted. I got the paint drying and we had the, new, the rebuilt overhaul transmission in the shop now. Andy's gonna go over a few more things that have to do with the transmission and the new torque converter. So yeah, obviously we, what we have right here is the, uh, is our remanufactured transmission. Um, probably one thing to point out that we definitely did was this here's the line pressure control solenoid. We replaced that, you know, it's not that expensive of a component. It's what can electronically controls pressure and transmission, the main control. There are a few other, uh, what we might call trimmer solenoids in there, but nonetheless, we made sure we replaced that. Um, you could see in the front here, this is the front, front cover, um, front pump seal. There's an O-ring around here and a snap ring. This came with our remanufactured pump. Even if we don't put another pump in, we always replace this. Could you reuse it? Sure, you're usually ding it up along the way. You know, just don't want to roll any dice. Again, we want to make sure we're getting everything uh, as close to 100% as possible. So this always gets replaced. You can see it's new here. This is our non-flex plate because it's just so darn, <laughs> so darn thick and, and well built that it's not going to flex. So it'll do everything we need it to do. Right here, this, this is our Suncoast converter. It's all billet on the back side here or front side, it depends on uh, who you're talking to. But again, this skin is what the triple discs apply against. So inside here, rather than having a single clutch lining that's attached to a piston, we actually have three, three floating discs. Say that you know three times fast, guys. Um, those discs are applied by a, a single billet piston. There's no question that if you guys even are dealing with any sort of performance upgrades, you're going to want to go this direction. The converter schedule in these diesels is very active. This sucker's coming on as early as 20 miles an hour, given the right load conditions, and it's on in almost every single gear. So it's very, very active. So when you're, you know, you're pulling away from a stop, you got, you're towing something, you're making some sort of awesome smoky burnout. This sucker's doing a lot of work, and you really want to make sure you make this upgrade. It's Probably one of the, you know, besides that drum that we put in here, this is number two on the list, I'd say. It's not cheap. This is a really, really expensive component. But, you know, when you're this far into it, you don't want to cut any corners. So it's awesome that we have that. So the goal for today is we're going to get all of this installed. We're also doing a cooling system bypass kit. Um, that would be interesting. It's eliminating a, a bracket. Why don't we go point that out right now? Way up there. You guys can see that round disc in the center above the top mating section for the transmission. That is the, help me out here, Steve. Freeze plug. Freeze plug, there we go, freeze plug. So we're gonna pop that puppy out. We bolt a uh, bypass assembly right there and then a hose will run over the top to thermostat housing. The only downside is there is a bracket that goes there, that lives there. This here is one of the many brackets, support brackets, that Dodge has, you know, through much R&D, decided it was necessary for all the torque load that's put through this drive line. Needless to say, I am skeptical about leaving this out. You know, I would, me personally, I would never be okay with it. But Steve's done a lot of research. He's happy with it. We're more than happy to do it and more than happy to fix the transmission when it breaks. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and leave this bracket out. But, you know, the upside is 
we still have two of these down each side. Typically, we only have upper bracketry. In here, we do have extra you know, lateral support on the transmission. So there is a possibility that, that Ram over-engineered it. That happens, you know, so we're gonna, we're gonna bank on that. We're gonna bank on over-engineering. We're gonna get rid of this, stick with these, run cooler, run faster. It's gonna be good stuff. Starting to install the fleece coolant bypass, draining some of the antifreeze to remove the freeze plug on the back of the engine block. What do you think? Some serious stuff right there. There's thermostat in there. Yeah, there's two. So it's a dual? Yep. Okay. What, again, what is the, what's the purpose of this? The purpose is the back half of these uh, Cummins engines, it, it gets hot because the coolant doesn't properly circulate through the engine block. So this actually bypasses it and circulates it through the front and back. So right. both sides are staying cooled equally. Okay. We're going to prevent some future problems by doing this, I'm sure. Truck's only got 16,000 miles, but now's the time to do it. You know, you got the transmission out of the truck. Now's the time to do it. Because I, I know they said that you can install this with the transmission in. I don't know. I would like to see it done because <laughs> I think it would be a miracle to try to install this with a transmission in. On a fourth gen. I don't know about a third gen, but definitely on a fourth gen. You're not. I'm going to have to call them out. It's, it's impossible. But if you could do it, I want to see the video. Send me a link. I want to see it. We're going to pop that freeze plug the disclaimer what we're feeling in there is casting imperfection in the cylinder head um, it's pretty deep it's on the inner edge of the cylinder head but you know it, it's very difficult to determine you know how far in this o-ring is going to live in that freeze plug hole, you know, you reach in it. There's no real technical way to go about this. You reach in there, you feel with your finger, try to gauge about how deep you think it is. I think the O-ring is going to live up against it, not on it. If it lives on it, it's going to leak. As long as it lives up against it, we're okay. So if it leaks, now we know why. When I say casting, we're, it's thick. Like it would take a grinder, you know, um, like a machine bit to get in there and clean it. It's nothing you're going to do with sandpaper or scotch braid or anything like that. And the location, you're not getting, realistically, without some really crazy right angle extension, you're not getting in, in there. And then you've got, what, shavings that you're going to be inside the cylinder head. I mean, it's... Floating around in the pool. Yeah, I mean, it's... There's no... We're either, you're either going to give this a go or you're not. And Steve said give it a go. Heard good things about Gorilla Tape. <laughs> get out of here. Boy, all you need is a little flex seal. You'll be fine. Oh, yeah, flex yeah. seal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll put, we, we'll, We'll go ahead and put some um, some screen material yeah, over top of it, and then we'll spray it with the Flex Seal, as seen on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure glad you guys are enjoying this. <laughs> I'm just voiding my factory warning even more. <laughs> Pete's got it all pretty much cleaned up up there. It looks beautiful. Here's a fun story about factory warranties. Um, we have a customer with a Nissan Rogue right now. Has 60,000 miles on it. Has the, those crappy CVT transmissions, and it needs a transmission. And he has a factory warranty, but he missed the tire rotation, so no warranty for him. Oh wow! Just FYI, guys, rotate your tires. That's crazy. That is crazy. What if right? you rotate them yourself? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. They want documentation, so I don't know, maybe if you wrote up your own. Yeah, I'm service. writing up my own RO. You're measuring the depth there, Pete. So yeah, it's gonna live, the O-ring will live right up against it. Got any lubrication? They said to oil this up first. Oil it? Yep. Cool it. Just something so it's not a dry ride. No dry rides in this shop. No dry rides. Pete's just gonna feed the hose up over top of the manifold for now. What was the torque on that? They didn't give it torque, he was just going back and forth a little bit at a time on each side. <clears throat> I will double check though. It's probably about that. It's probably about that. Yeah. <laughs> Good and tight? Good and tight. Hey guys, one thing to make note of, Pete, I don't know if you noticed on the video, he made sure that that coolant bypass 
with the thermostat that we just installed in the back of the engine block. I don't know why I just said all that. He made sure that that was fully seated prior to even tighten it down. You don't want to walk that o-ring in with the bolts so it was completely seated before we tighten it down and there is no torque spec so you just make it good and tight good and tight right now pete's just torquing down the new flex plate actually non-flex plate with this flex plate we did not use the factory shims we were told by mikey garofalo who had contacts over at revmax said not to use them so we were a little concerned why was that andy well, so the concern was the the new non-flex plate is obviously thicker than the old flex plate, um, but we're using the factory flex plate to crank bolts. So there was concern about how many threads we were going to get into the crank because of the thicker non-flex plate. He said everything was good to go. Obviously, don't use the shims because that's going to leave less threads exposed on the crank side of the non-flex plate. We went ahead and took a look for ourselves. There's more than 50% of the bolt is still passing through the non-flex plate, so. We're good. Right, it was some fancy something that uh, Pete found in the build room to keep debris from getting in there while we were transporting no, it. No, no, no. Yeah, how about that? No, this is a, so this is where the dipstick goes in. Um, obviously, during transport and stuff, you want as few um, orifices open as possible so you keep debris out. So this is designed to um, be easily punctured with the dipstick tube. Um, so as we as the tube goes in, it essentially pierces this hymen right here and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we're we're good to go. Pop it like it's hot. <laughs> it's a it's a one it's a one time show, as we all know. <laughs> one time. Transmission is in. Transfer case. Cross member. We adjusted a couple bolts to make the cross member more uh, removable in the future. The upper control arm in the front. You could not slide the bolt through the upper control arm, so. We turned it and shortened it so that now the bolt can come out without having to interfere with the upper control arm. But everything else is buttoned up. Yes. The shifter linkage is all connected, all the wiring's plugged back in. And I'm not going to put the drive shaft in until we get this control arm. Hell no. <laughs> we need all the help we can get. And then we'll get to finishing up the fleece installation, putting some ATF fluid back in the beast. And then road tester. It's nice and humid in here. Nice and humid. All right. This was uh, this was a little bit of a nightmare, but we got it bolted in. Ratchet straps. Yeah. See, that's all you need. Ratchet <laughs> strap. Get the upper control arm in line, which is now, of course, done. But that was the technique. Uh, isn't that a nice sign, guys? The truck is back on our wheels, on the ground. And we're gonna finish installing the fleece, coolant bypass. It's a fun part. Yeah. It's always a good idea to tighten this up. But you also have to make sure there's no kinks in the hose. So yeah. we might have to play around with it a little bit. Once that's mounted, you're not going to be able to tighten that because you can't get a wrench in there. Fully supply some nice, I guess it's anodized. It looks like it. Really? Hold downs for the hose. So you're going to install these fasteners between the two and three cylinders and the four and five. Now that we got those mounted, this is going to tighten them up. Then we're going to move on to the thermostat housing. Fleece supplies you with three nice bolts. And we were going to replace the thermostat while we were in here, but the one we got from Napa looked really chintzy and cheap, so we're going to keep the stock one in there. This truck's only got 16,000 miles on it, so we should be all right. this mod all the cylinders are going to be nice and cool and happy. Right Pete? Yes. <laughs>
All right, we're gonna check the line for kinks and then finish mounting them up above the manifold. I think it looks pretty damn good. Oh yeah. What do you think? Yep. We, <laughs> that one went right to home. Where it belongs. It's like it's meant to be. All right, we're finishing up the fasteners. With the cool bypass line, all done. Yes, good. It's gonna make all the cylinders happy again. I like the way it bends. Yep. I was, concerned, I was concerned that it's going to end up touching the manifold, the manifold yeah. back there, but it hooked, it hooked it to the left, which is ideal because it's not, there's, there's no contact. See that, guys? Yeah. Now it's time to fill. Time to fill her up. ATF fluid from Amsoil, and we got to put the batteries back, to, back together, tighten them up. It's crux time. That's the story, anyway. That's the story. <laughs> Anything can happen. Anything can happen yeah. now. I don't want to. I want to jinx myself. Yeah, jinx it. I mean, you know. I've done that in the past, guys. I've jinxed this. One way to refill your coolant. Yeah, evacuating all of the air out of the system, creating a vacuum, so that when you open the valve, you're only getting coolant, removing the air bubbles, eliminating any air pockets. Yeah. It's going in, guys. The hoses are collapsed from the, the, the vacuum. Let's see, I learned something new. Yeah, I've never seen this before. Well, you can do it the old-fashioned way. That's that's the way I'm used to. And fill it, and hope that uh, you don't have to park it on an incline or an angle, and have the funnel with the bubbles, and let it run until the bubbles come stop coming or it overflows. <laughs> Good times. And as that hose returns to normal, the system is close to full. Just like that, we're full. Full. So it's time for ATF time. If you guys are in the market for some AMSOIL, make sure you hit up my friend Tim Champness. His information is always going to be in the description of all my videos. He is a AMSOIL dealer. And he's a supporter of the channel, so help him out, help me out. Greatly appreciate it, guys. Definitely check him out. If you have any questions about any type of Amsoil products, hit him up. He's very experienced. The time has come. Pete's gonna put it in about five quarts to get it started. Yep. Are you guys pumped like I'm pumped? I'm pumped. <laughs> it's going down. Sir. It's alive, guys. It's alive. We're getting her filled up. We're gonna to need to get the transmission up to temp in order to do the quick learn process. So I got her hooked up. I'm just wirelessly, we're watching, watching the temp go up. You can see we started down here at 78. It's only been running for about a minute. So we're almost up to 80 degrees. And we'll see what, a lot of times with these Chrysler products, we definitely notice it with the front wheel drives too. We end up having to drive them because you just can't get the transmission hot enough in order to be able to run the, the uh, quick learn. So, you go out, very gingerly drive it, uh, just till the temperature gets up there, and then you're good to do the quick learn. So we'll see what happens, but probably gonna have to drive it. She's alive! <laughs> it's moving. All right, guys, this video is coming to a wrap, and I know you wanna see the test drive, but you have to wait till the next video, sorry. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys keep watching, keep watching all of them. Everybody see, look, we got the fam. Everybody say hi. We got Team Ram Beast, Team CCT. Let's go make a little noise. Yeah. There we go. Beast Again, is on the road. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We hope to see you next time. That's right, and you're supposed to hit subscribe when you're done watching the video. Oh, you got hit hit like too. And what else? What else are you supposed to do? Actually, like the whole break your phone. Don't break your phone. Don't break your phone. Take the hammer and smash your phone. No, don't break your phone. It could be fun. Break it. See you guys.